Hello, my name is Hanno Rein. Welcome to video number seven in the Rebound YouTube tutorial series. Today, we are going to talk about the higher order wisdom Holman methods that are implemented in Rebound. Now, I assume for this video that you already know what a wisdom Holman type integrator is. Specifically about, you know something about WHFAS, the specific implementation of the wisdom Holman method implemented in Rebound. There are some references on the screen. If you're not familiar with those, you can also watch the first WHFAST video on this channel. Now in this video, we'll talk some of the advanced features, more specifically, how to get a higher order symplectic integrator. These might make your simulations more accurate, but not necessarily faster. One of the exceptions is the safe mode, which we've already talked about in the first video. So the two specific features I'd like to talk about today are symplectic correctors and then the kernel method. So let's start with the symplectic correctors. When we're integrating a physical system forward in time, we're not really integrating the exact physical system. We're integrating some slightly perturbed system. Let's call it a numerical system or a numerical simulation. So although we start from the same initial conditions, at each integration step that we move our initial conditions forward to the next time step, we solve a slightly different system. And this leads to the error that we're seeing in the end. What these symplectic correctors do is they add a transformation at the very beginning and at the very end of the integration or whenever we need an output. What this transformation does is it's slightly perturbing the initial conditions so that we're starting from different initial conditions in our numerical simulation. And we're perturbing them in a very specific way, namely to make the integration later on more similar to that of the real physical system that we actually want to integrate. So this is a bit of a complicated concept and I can't go into too many details in this video. Have a look at the references that I've um, shown you on the first slide. Um, but an alternative way to think about this is Think, think of this as a warm-up method. This is an idea um, first introduced by Tremaine, um, where you don't necessarily have to have a symplectic integrator, but can have a similar sort of effect. Using a warm-up method, what you do is you slowly increase the time step from a very small number to that constant number that you want to use later on. By slowly changing the time step, making it bigger and bigger, you effectively do something very similar to what the symplectic correctors do. The symplectic correctors do that in one step. You only have to apply them once rather than slowly increasing the, um, the time step. So they're a bit more useful, especially when it comes to symplectic correctors. What these symplectic correctors can achieve is a significant increase in accuracy. And because they only need to be applied at the very beginning and at the very end, you basically have the same speed as with the normal wisdom Holman method. You just have a more accurate result in the end. But this also means that symplectic correctors are not really helpful if you use the safe mode in rebound. For the safe mode, um, the symplectic correctors need to be applied at every single time step. And that's quite time consuming and effectively makes the um, symplectic correctors useless. But if you use them with the safe mode turned off, what you can see on the right is a typical increase in, in accuracy by about a factor of 1000 here. It's a factor of 1000 because the mass ratio in this specific system between the planets and the central object is about 1000. That's the case for our solar system where Jupiter is 1000 times as mass, less massive than the Sun. For many exoplanetary systems with small mass planets that ratio is even higher. So you get a factor of 1000 in accuracy gain using these symplectic correctors if you use sufficiently small time steps. Note that I'm using the relative energy error here as a metric for how good our integrations are. Um, that's not the only metric you could use, but uh, in general, the, the, all, all the metrics sort of agree that these symplectic correctors are a significant improvement um, over the non-symplectic versions. Next, let's talk about the kernel method. In addition to slightly perturbing the initial conditions 
so that our numerical map from one time step to another will later on be more similar to the real map or the physical system, we can also just make the numerical map more accurate. And that's precisely what the kernel methods do. There's one additional constraint, namely that we want to make this method faster and more, uh, more accurate, but we don't want to get rid of our Kepler solver because the Keplerian motion is still the dominant part and this is a complicated algorithm to calculate the Keplerian motion. We want to only change the step that calculates the forces from other planets, so the kick step in a wisdom hohmann integrator. So all these kernel methods implement different kick steps in the drift, kick, drift part of a wisdom hohmann integrator. Um, in general, for all the kernel methods, you always want to use them together with these symplectic correctors. The different kernel methods built into rebound. There's a default wisdom hohmann kick step. That's just what wisdom hohmann uses by default. But then you can also use what's called the exact modified kick. This implements this higher order kick step, but it only works for Newtonian gravity. It can, does not work for additional forces. You would have to rederive an entirely different modified kick step whenever you change your additional forces. There's another method called the composition method. As the name suggests, it combines um, various operators in a composition way to approximate an exact modified kick kernel. This works uh, well, but is a bit slower than the exact kick method, but has the advantage that you can use um, additional forces if needed. And then the last way to do that is by using a lazy implementers modified kick method. This is in generally the in general the best option. It's very efficient. Um, it's accurate enough for most situations and you can use additional forces without any uh, difficulty. So in most cases you want to use the lazy implementers modified kick method. Here's uh, the same plot as before that shows you the accuracy of the simulation and here I'm plotting an additional line, the bottom one, where the lazy corrector method is used. You can see that it's even more accurate by at most another factor of 1000 compared to the other methods. You can also see that it's higher order, whereas wisdom hohmann and the wisdom hohmann method with the symplectic correctors is a second order method for reasonable time steps. This method is now fourth order in the time step. And in fact, it's even better than just a fourth order method. It has this epsilon parameter in as, a, as a constant in front, epsilon squared times dt to the power of four. And epsilon encodes this mass ratio of the central object to the, um, to the other perturbations in the system. For the solar system, this is about 10 to the minus three or one thousandth. So with this high order and with this epsilon factor, you very quickly reach machine precision. Double floating point machine precision is about 10 to the minus 16, 10 to the minus 15. So with only a hundred steps per orbit, and using this lazy kernel method, you basically reach machine precision. You do that at almost the same speed as the standard wisdom holding method. Now there's an additional type of um, high order method implemented in rebound that makes use of WHFAS in the background. They're called the Saba methods. This, uh, the Saba methods make use of a Lee series approach. So it's a slightly different way of uh, interpreting uh, the different operators. Um, one of the uh, really standout methods is Saba 1064. This method has a generalized order of 1064, which means um, it's 10th order in dt with an epsilon in front, and then 6th order in dt with an epsilon squared in front, and uh, fourth order with an epsilon cubed in front. So this is even even more accurate in many cases than some of the other wisdom hohmann methods we just talked about. If you want to read up on these methods more, have a look at Laskar and Robotel 2001 or the review paper by Ryan Tamayo and Brown 2019. The nice thing about all these high order wisdom hohmann methods that are implemented in rebound is that they're trivial to use. All you have to do is say sim.integrator and then tell rebound which integrator you want to use. Everything else is done for you in the background. 
So if you're currently using WH fast, by all means, try out WHC, which turns on the cor symplectic correctors, or try out WCKL, which turns on the symplectic correctors and the lazy kernel method, or the same goes for all these Saba methods. So you might ask yourself, should I use correctors or this kernel method in your numerical simulations? And after watching this video, you might think, the answer is obviously yes, but maybe surprisingly, I'm going to say no. Um, in most cases, you probably do not want to use these kernel methods. And the reason for that is just that you probably don't need them. Let me explain a bit more detail why you might not really need them. You only need this high accuracy for very specific cases. Cases where you don't need them are large, large scale parameter space surveys that you might run when you want to find out if your newly discovered exoplanetary system is stable or not. In those cases, you really do not care about the accuracy of an individual simulation that much. In general, you need to know the initial conditions really well for a high accurate simulation to be even meaningful. Otherwise, you can just run an ensemble of simulations that have similar initial conditions and then in a statistical sense you will get effectively the same answers out no matter which method you use. Furthermore, all these methods that we've talked about in this video make use of the fact that the Keplerian motion is the dominant part and all the perturbations are small. This is the case for planetary systems but you exclude a lot of cases like close encounters, collisions, any orbit crossing. As soon as these events happen, none of the methods talked about in this video are good anymore. Now, one exception are probably symplectic correctors. It probably doesn't hurt to use them. In, it's just one small transformation that you apply at the beginning and at the end of your simulation, and you get a more accurate result out. Whether you're going to see a difference or not depends most cases no, but it will probably not hurt. The real reason for why these higher order methods are not very useful is because for all of them you still need to resolve the orbital period and that's ultimately limiting how fast of a simulation you can have. Let me show you that by showing you the diagram um, again that we had on the screen. If you think about the time step that you choose for a simulation, you can see that anything larger than about 10% of the orbital period is just not converged. You're not getting any physically meaningful results out. All the curves on this plot give you similar relative errors, but even these are sort of a bit of an underestimate. Really, you're not getting the system right if you're having a time step with a, that is larger than 10 of the shortest time, dynamical time scale in the problem. Now let's make it smaller then. Let's make it 10 times smaller so we're on the safe side. So then we have a time step of 10 to the minus 2 in orbital periods. And if you look at the different lines here, if you have that time step, Wisdom Holman gives you an error of about 10 to the minus 7, maybe 10 to the minus 8. And that's already plenty of accuracy for almost all the simulations that you want. In very rare cases, you need an accuracy of higher than 10 to the minus 8. If you turn on the symplectic correctors, well then yes, you, you can make them more accurate. You get to about 10 to minus 11, 10 to minus 10 in accuracy. But these lazy kernel methods, for example, gives you an even higher accuracy, 10 to the minus 13. But that now already reaches machine precision. So any smaller time steps will no longer make this method more accurate. It just makes it slower and in fact slightly less accurate because you're going to accumulate numerical round of errors because you have more steps to run. So in reality, you're really looking at Wisdom Holman with a reasonable time step of 1% of the orbital period, giving you an accuracy of 10 to the minus 8, which is good enough for everything you need to do in most cases. Um, and all these high order methods only give you a bit more accuracy over a relatively small range of, par of time steps that you can choose from. And note that for a general planetary system, you don't only have one orbital period in there, you have multiple ones in there. So you are limited here by the shortest orbital period, the innermost one. So even though you might have now a very accurate method for the outer planets that have a larger orbital period, you're already limited by the machine precision in the first place. So 
there are really um, a lot of um, uh, cases where Wisdom Holman is just good enough. That's all I wanted to talk to you about in this video. There are two rebound IPython example notebooks that talk specifically about the advanced Wisdom Holman features. They are listed here and also in the video description below. And if you have questions about using any of those methods, feel free to post an issue or a question on the GitHub repository for Rebound. Thank you, and I hope to see you in a future video.